You know, it just occurs to me, if Vince really wanted to change Valter's name, he should have called him Smud. Smud? Right? No. Yeah. I don't think Yeah. He hey, here comes Smud. That would be better than Gunther. Smud. You don't like Smud? Well, it's better than Gunther. You are kind of convincing me of Smud, I have to say. <laughs> here comes Smud. <laughs> no, here's the... And I, I can't imagine that I didn't bring this up the other day when we were talking about Valter's name change because I'd said, hey, if you want to sell Vince on this guy, I said, what would he look like in a German uniform or a Russian uniform or he looks like a, you know, the foreign terrorist in a Bruce Willis Die Hard movie or whatever that, that look he's got, right? I didn't know they would go straight to World War II Nazis, but do you remember the Truth Commission? Oh, of course, the commandant, and they had a bunch of other guys. Yeah, a bunch of other guys. It was, no, the Punisher was uh was in well, the and, Truth and Commission. Paul Buchanan, yeah, Barry Buchanan, and and poor old Kurgan, and God damn it, who was the other one? Was Giant Silva in the Truth Commission to start, or am I wrong? It eventually Don Callis. I think, well, eventually, uh, Don Callis and then uh, Kurgan went to the, uh, or not Kurgan, but uh, uh, Giant Silva went to the oddities, and then Kurgan ended up in the oddities. There was another guy, though, and I don't There was remember. another guy, and, and, and that's the problem, is he was the fourth guy, counting the commandant. But where I was going with that was Vince, one day, we go over to, to his house to write TV, and this is when I hear about the Truth Commission and the Commandant. And for everybody who's thinking, what in the world are they talking about? Go back to 1997 WWF television, Raw, before this was before SmackDown was on the air. There was suddenly appeared this Commandant, and he was the head of a three-man team, as we mentioned, it, I think at the start it may have been Kurgan, Barry, and Silver, whoever the fuck. But Vince started talking about this. Yeah, he, the commandant was an actor that they had found somehow. And like I said, this is when you're on the creative team and there's Vince telling you what the creative is. We're supposed to be writing this shit, but me and Bruce got to sit because he's had an idea. And he apparently watched the news sometime and in 1996, they appointed what they called, it was the Truth and Something Commission in South Africa after apartheid to bring the opposing sides together, and they were all supposed to testify, and the punishment would be meted out, or, you know, a compromise would come to, it was, was going to clear all this shit out, right? Well, Vince apparently had seen that on the news or on television or read about it or something and somehow thought that he was going to have this gimmick translate to wrestling and found this actor from, he may have been from South Africa, but he had an accent. He was. Bret Hart met Okay. Him. Yeah, Bret Hart met him. Bret Hart meets all these foreign actors, right? Thank you for that, because I couldn't remember how he fucking come across him. It wasn't, if, if, remember when Vince hired, um, oh, goddamn, Mo and Mabel and, and, uh, Oscar. Oscar, men on a mission. He was just some guy, Vince was at the hotel at WrestleMania and Oscar jumped in the elevator and did a rap for him. Got hired to be a manager. Clarence Mason was actually a real attorney in Texas, but he was a big wrestling fan and somehow came on the radar and they had it. Then they had a lawyer, Clarence McClarence Darrow and Perry Mason. Um, so Vince decides he's going to have a truth commission. He's got this commandant. He's an actor. They're going to put these three guys in there. So these three guys show up in fit military fatigues and berets with this commandant having a march and giving them orders. But this is where I was going with this Vince McMahon. He saw this in his head. He had some vision of what he wanted this commandant to be like, to do and say, and how he wanted these guys to act, but he couldn't articulate it. 
and nobody could figure out how to transfer the South African Truth Commission into a wrestling tag team. And they never got over because it, it was another thing that Vince was sending this out by telepathy. He could see it. He could hear the guy saying shit he would like. He just couldn't tell us what the shit was. And it was just, it was brutal. And, you know, you try to do something with it. Cause Kurgan was great. Kurgan on his own as a monster heel, you could have got mileage out of him some way. He wasn't the most polished Jack Briscoe-esque performer in the world, but he had the fucking, the face and the size and the look and those big hands. And he was, he was in movies. He's still in movies. He's, he became an actor and he, you know, uh, for parts that call for a fucking guy that doesn't look like anybody else. Barry Buchanan was an incredible worker for his size and could walk the ropes and had balance. And it was six foot six and 280 and just the best human being in the world. But this was just, it was, it was a gimmick that nobody understood and nobody could figure out what the fuck it was. And then of course, shit stain it gets a hold of it later on or hold of some of these guys. The, the, the commandant petered out quickly. He had no wrestling experience at all. And he was an actor, which meant he would say words if you gave them to him, but he couldn't do his own shit. So he couldn't get himself over because he, that wasn't his thing. He wasn't supposed to just ad lib shit, right? Like wrestlers do. That's why wrestlers aren't actors. They're reactors. So, then remember Kurgan ended up with Giant Silva and poor John Tenta in the oddities. Remember the human oddities? How could I ever forget? And they threw Luna in there. <clears throat> and that's when Shitstein got the, the crack-addicted dwarf from Howard Stern, whatever. And this is, again, I bring this up because this was Mark thinking, not Booker thinking or promoter thinking. You have a group of human oddities. Well, on the surface of it, that sounds like something that you should do. Well, well, since we've got a bunch of oddities, we'll have a group of them. Well, then if you, if you have one freak, you have an attraction. If you have a group of freaks, you have a sideshow and nobody gets over. So all it was was just visual chaos by having a bunch of weird looking people in the ring at the same time and no focus on any of them. Let me ask you a question, Brian, who was the best in ring 400 pounder in the seventies? The best in ring 400 pounder, uh, Jerry Blackwell. That's exactly who I was thinking you were going to say. Who was the best 400 pounder of the 1980s? Terry Gordy never got the 400. Bundy wasn't the greatest. Well, I will, I will say late 80s, early 90s to oh, Vader. hone it in for you. Well, no, I'm not talking early 90s, mid 90s. I'm talking late 80s before Vader was good. Bam Bam Bigelow. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Think about it. 86 in Memphis, 87, 88. He was the best of the 80s. Who was the best in the 90s? 400 pounder. You already said him, Vader. So one of these outlaw indie mud show promoters would think oh this is a dream match for all the hardcore fans if you had all three of those guys in their prime at the same time some one of these mud shows would book a six-man tag with one team vader bam bam bigelow jerry blackwell right you can see it that's yeah. mark booking that's mark thinking that's not promoter thinking that's a dream team to the people that you're already going to sell tickets to because those are the hardcore fans that want to see anything you do, right? But for promoter thinking, you've got Vader, Bigelow, and Blackwell on the same team. Who gets over? Here's a guy that does incredible things for his freakish size. And here's two more just like him standing next to him. It eliminates the specialness. So a lot of these groups and factions, some of them come from Vince's weird ideas of things that he can't necessarily convey. And some of them come from 
lazy thinking like shit stain or the indie promoter. Well, let's just put all these people in a group. And then none of those people in the group gets over, except if you have a head of a group like a, I don't know, a past his expiration date canned ham who makes it all about him and subjugates everybody in that group as his flunkies. Canned ham, you say? Canned ham! But yeah, so I'm surprised they didn't make Valter a member of the South African Truth Commission to wrap that whole thing up. I prefer if he was a member of SMUD. But let's get our I'm next question. You, SMUD, that's a money gimmick. I smell money.